has a high end and happy pride so I've been really bad at coming up with ideas for the last while and I decided to do a video that I've been meaning to for a while and that's been in my mind and I just thought you might as well do it and that is my top 10 favorite Disney princesses and I'm gonna kind of go from my favorite to my least favorite and yeah we'll go from there so number one is which I think I remember mentioning in a previous video is Rapunzel because Rapunzel is just the one princess I relate to most because she's adventurous she's carefree she just wants to go out and visit the lights and see what's out there and what's out in the world and like just just to explore and find out what's out there like that's what she's her whole life's about it's like seeing the light getting out there and seeing the world and that's what I love about her and just the fact she's so carefree and she She's just amazing. I just love her so much. And I think that she's probably Flynn and her are my favourite OTB so much because I love them both. And I just love Manny Moore's voice as well because it's just so good. And I just love her couple song with Flynn so much. But yeah. Also, I was really living my Rapunzel fantasy there last week when I was at home. It was like really warm and I was wearing, wearing no socks or shoes, just running around with my feet, not really caring. And I tend to climb out windows a lot in my house. My family were kind of concerned but... Hey, I just like doing it. <laughs> so number two is Megara, or as she's known to her friends, Meg. The reason is just like, if you've watched Hercules, you're gonna have to agree why. <laughs> because Meg is amazing. She's sassy, she's amazing, she's hot, sarcastic as hell, and the fact that her whole like backstory is the fact that the one she loved died and then she gave up her soul to bring him back to life and then suddenly ran out for another woman. Like come on. And also you cannot help but love her song. Like, I won't say I'm in love and Ariana Grande's version of that. Oh amazing. And the fact that Ariana Grande also did the music as well. Oh yes I love it. But yes Meg is definitely number two because I love Hercules, the movie, and Meg just blows my mind because she's just so amazing. Just the line. Aren't you a damsel in distress? I'm a damsel. I'm in distress. I can handle this. Have a nice day. Come on. How much more badass can a Disney heroine be? Number three is Tiana from Princess and the Frog and if you are wondering why, just look at her. She doesn't need a man, she's not looking for a man. She's a person who, she's independent, she wants to open up a business, like a restaurant, because her father loved cooking and so did she and she wanted to kind of carry on the legacy of her father because when he died, she just wanted to make him proud. And that's what I just love about Tiana. Like, she is a hard worker, she's independent, she's strong-willed, and she's got high hopes, and she's very goal-driven, and she just has a future in mind. And of course, that changes in the movie, but the thing is, the fact that she's like that, she's not looking for a prince, she's not looking for anyone, like, she finds Prince Avene later on, and she doesn't really know she wants that until she, she kind of figures out thanks to Mama Odie and she's the one black Disney princess that she is needed and they need more of them because she is important and she's amazing especially in these times so my next one is Mulan and Mulan is just amazing like she, and though she's another like strong character I know that she, a lot of the Chinese people really hated the animated movie because the fact it didn't portray the story of Mulan right but I just love, love Mulan she was this strong woman who didn't want her father to go out because he was hurt badly and he just couldn't go out to war so she decided to make her up her mind and go and just pretend to be a man and just go and show her father that she can be a strong individual and she just help and she wasn't looking for a man at the time all she wanted to do was help her father out that was all her mind and that's why I love about any Disney princess who don't really look for a man and they may find a man along the way but it's mainly about their just trying to do something different and come on you got a bit of lover companion Mushu. Next one is number five Jasmine. Now before the, like the live action film I probably would have put her up more but ever since seeing the live action film I've got kind of like uh contradicting views on both like characters because both have like good points and bad points about them. Bad points which was raised by the live action film. And the reason is because I love Jasmine in the animated film because while she does look for a man, like she wants to find a man for love rather than have an arranged marriage. After the very start of the movie when she does go out into the Marrakesh and Aladdin finds her, she starts running away with him and then he thinks that she needs help but she shows that she's a strong independent woman doesn't need 
need a man when she needs help. She will go and save herself because that's what a strong woman does. I mean, uh, you don't seem to know how dangerous Agrabah can be. <laughs> I'm a fast learner. <laughs> But yeah, that's why I just find her she's amazing and like and that's why I love her so much and like I would have put up on her more but the live action film kind of did things to her that pushed her down a few notches. And one reason was because in live action there's one scene that sh they were doing the kind of the same thing from the original animated film where they were jumping from like one building to another one and instead of her going over with a pole she needs help from Aladdin and it was like really I know it's kind of a build up kind of thing that it has this her character built up to the animated movie of Jasmine But yeah, that's what kind of knocked her down if you knocked this for mine Because the fact that they made her build up the character rather than make her a badass very start But she does have good points too because Jasmine in the live action film Makes her out that she doesn't want a man. She doesn't have to have a man to be sultan Why can't she just be a sultan herself? I love that. She's like that's one of the good points and also also, the song speech list, like, that is a good song. But she's still part of my top 10 list. She's my number 5. So, my number 6 is Moana. And very much like Rapunzel, Moana, for me, she is a... Like, she's a strong woman. For the entire film, she doesn't go get with any man at all. Like, she meets Maui, and that's it. She, like, she doesn't get with Maui, because he's, like, a de demigod. All she wants to do is just go and explore the sea, and see what's out there. And, like, as I said, very much like Rapunzel, she wants to see what's out there and I will sail across the sea and restore the hearts of Tefiti. She's driven to something and she wants to go and do it even though she's been told no you can't do it she keeps going and she just makes the choice to go and just find a way yeah that's what I love Moana and also she's a Polynesian princess and you gotta love her and so my number seven is Ariel and I know that uh, my friend Coral would possibly I don't know maybe she'd be like a bit shocked that uh, Ariel is not up more than this but the, my reason why Ariel is not like in the top five at least is because I feel like Ariel Ariel, kind of like Jasmine, she has her good points, but she has her bad points as well. She wants to go out and see what is like in the real world, like above the, the sea, and see where people who walk on, what's that word again? Oh, feet. So yeah, she wants to go out and like see the world, but what kind of pushes her to do it even more is a man. Like she wants to meet this man and find out who he is and like fall in love with him and I, that's what kind of pushed it for me a bit because a lot of Disney princesses these days are like very they're making them out they don't need a man I like that and then she gives up her voice specifically just to meet this man and I was like oh uh, I don't know yeah still I'm not gonna ever complain about the film I love the film but it's just like that's why she's lower on the list and I just I love Ariel voice actress as well who sings part of your world like amazing number eight is who is not a Disney princess but she's a Pixar princess you could say, uh, Merida. Another strong woman, like, doesn't really need a man. She just can take care of herself. She's a dab hand with a bow and arrow, and she can do whatever she wants. Like, she can go off and explore, and she wants to be a queen herself and not have someone telling her what to do. She's wild spirited, she's amazing, she's just a badass overall, and she just, I love that. It's just, and the fact that she's Scottish too, like, come on, I gotta, gotta stand for my, my Scottish girls because I'm Irish, come on. That's why Merida is on my number eight because she's just awesome. And <laughs> just like when you watch Ralph Breaks the Internet, oh my god, like that one scene where she talks and no one understands her, that is just a hilarious scene. I gave my mommy a cake, she turned into a big bear, and my old didn't try to do it in. If that's not a pure mess, I don't know what is. Uh, we can't understand her. She's from the other studio. Ah. Number nine is Belle. And I know a lot of people love Beauty and the Beast like a lot, but I feel like for Belle, I like Beauty and the Beast. Some people don't like live action. I do love live action, especially since Emma Watson played her. Belle is low down on this because, like a lot of the princesses, she's not really cared much about like a man. Like the fact 
fact that Gaston was trying to get with her and she was like, I don't want to be with Gaston. Like, I don't need to go and get with the next man that wants to be with me. I don't need a man. She's a lot of good uh, character points about her that I love. The fact that she was uh, went out to find her father and she volunteered to give up her life just to, so her father could go out and be alive because he was a lot older. That's what I like about Belle. I think it's probably just the fact that she's a bookworm and she does want to get out in the world and see the, see the great wide uh, somewhere. I want to keep her on the top 10 list but the fact that like, Beauty and the Beast is not really as loved by me as more of the other films, I'm going to put her there at number 9. And number 10 is Anna from Frozen and part of the reason is because I'm not a Frozen fan like I don't come for me I just ever since uh, Let It Go it just kind of ruined my view on Frozen I just it's overplayed it's overdone and just everyone loves that film every time I go to Disneyland Paris and they play Let It Go everyone's like oh I'm like Ugh, I just can't stand it when everyone's hyping up the best Disney film ever and all that. I just like, no, no, there's so many more better Disney films out there. There's so many better Disney soundtracks out there. Just go find one. It's I can say one. Hercules, come on. But yeah, I love Anna because while she is very much like a Disney princess that she just falls for the next man that she meets, that's what I kind of like knocked her down quite a bit because the fact that she just falls for the next man she meets rather than finding a man that she has a connection with, she just meets this guy who she thinks she has a connection with because the guy is just like a manipulative bat. Uh, first film not so much but the second film really helped build on both characters of Anna and Elsa and made me love the characters so much more especially Kristoff because everyone knows Kristoff and Ben come on and Olaf just yeah and that song the next right thing is very relatable and you can all, you can completely feel where she's coming from you can link that with something that maybe happened during your life and that's what I love about Anna and just and like some people will be questioning why didn't I pick Elsa, let it go. Just that push her anyway. I love Anna more because she's more relatable. She hasn't got powers, as uh, Olaf says, one born with power, one born powerless. That's why I feel Anna is better. While Elsa has good strong points too, I just felt more related to Anna. While Elsa's dress, uh, when she turns into that beautiful flowing dress with the diamonds on it. I love that dress so much. It's like that is better than any dress she wore in any of the Frozen films and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Of course that was just cozy but still I love that dress. It is amazing. I was like oh my god I love that dress. Like it speaks to the Let It Go dress so much more. Come on. Anna number 10 and that's it. But yeah tell me down below your favourite Disney princesses, maybe top 5, top 10, whatever you want to say. And yeah, because I want to find out more what other people love. And yeah, if you did enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys hopefully in two weeks because you know how bad I am right now. Bye! See you later.